Hello and welcome to Actually to Stick with Milan and John. Today we're talking about depression and mental health. And... <laughs> okay, that was an anticlimax. Yay, it's the 20th episode! <laughs> <laughs> of actual autistic. It's 20 weeks to learn. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> the reason we wanted to make this video was because depression is extremely common in autistic people. Um, everyone seems to talk about how they've suffered from depression, like extreme depression. So I thought it was important to bring it up. It's and very important. And there's so many reasons to why you are suffering more from depression than others, right? Yeah. Depression, most of the time, I would assume, is caused by the fact that we're so hated all the time. We're hated mis or, or misunderstood. Yeah, we're yeah. miscredited, misunderstood, and harassed all the time. The, the mindset of children is, if the adults don't respect this person, then I don't have to respect them either. Yeah. It's that. So it's bullying in school, and then it's also the fact that, at least in Sweden, you have a hard time to get the right kind of education that consider you kind of difficulties. It's been extremely difficult for me and many others to get the help that we need. You don't get taken seriously. Yeah. With depression and, and other kind of health issues. I don't know if it's because you don't have the mimic and and it, it doesn't show in your face that you're suffering. So people might think that you're a drama queen. Yeah. Um, because they can't really connect what you're saying with how you are acting or expressing yourself. Yeah, I laugh a lot. That's actually been brought up a few times when I talk to people about heavy subjects that I've like, stuff that I've gone through and stuff, and I start laughing a lot. Every single time I have to explain that it's become a, like, reactive thing for whenever I get uncomfortable when I'm talking about something really painful, <laughs> that I just start laughing. So there are definitely a lot of outside factors that make people with autism more prone to depression, but there are also traits in autism itself that might worsen or make it easier for you to get trapped in negative thoughts and stuff, right? Yeah, it's very, very, very common for autistic people to ruminate, which is when you over, when you think over and over and over about a different, like a very specific thing. An autistic trait is to hyperfocus, and that basically means something that interests you, but rumination can become far more intense when you're autistic, considering the fact that you have that trait. That's why it's so necessary for adults that you have a good relation with yeah. your kids so you can talk about things, otherwise yeah. you get like isolated with that thought and it just grows and grows and grows. There was one time when something weird happened and that became a hyper-focus target, so I thought about it for probably four months. It took a really long time for my brain to let go of it. During that time, it was just repeating that in my head constantly. Some of the symptoms of depression are guilt, apathy, sleeping too much or too little, insomnia, appetite loss, irritability, loss of hobbies, life enjoyment, motivation loss, moving or speaking slower or faster than usual, avoiding socializing, difficulties with everyday activities, and rumination. Guilt is one of the main reasons why depression accelerates in its in its intensity because the more the more painful experiences you go through if you have the self-blame aspect of depression then if you experience some sort of traumatic situation where someone treated you wrong um, then your brain will convince you that it was all your fault and then there's a guilt cycle there's a guilt cycle and there's also shame, shaming yeah. part of it. Yeah. So guilt and shame often go together. Losing your feeling of that you have any worth, that cycle can end up leading to self-harm or very dangerous thought processes. Yeah. So how would you describe depression feels like, Manon? It's like a constant... It's, it's almost, I feel like I would describe it, in my case, I feel like I would describe it almost like you're constantly, uh, a bunch of boulders are being piled onto you, and <laughs> you, 
you have to hold them up all by yourself and nobody's coming to help you. Um, and signs of depression, you know, you're ex excessively tired, uh, you, you complain of stomach ache or headaches, can't sleep, stuff like that are signs of depression and it's also signs of real stress. Especially when it comes to autistic people. Because in my case, I feel like a lot of autistic people tend to experience things a lot more intensely mm -hmm. because of the fact that we're so sensitive all the time. Like right now, I've seen a lot of um, like a lot of positive posts giving you like positive reinforcement and stuff of like telling you to hydrate or whatever and then praising you for whatever you've done, right? Sometimes, honestly, yeah. when life really sucks. <laughs> yeah. Just taking another breath is good enough. I feel like one of the reasons why depression becomes so uncontrollable is because people feel so shameful over it. So they feel like it's like giving up. They feel like they're being weak if they search for help. It's actually extremely strong to look for help. To those who have a depressed person walking up to them trying to look for help, never ever try to tell them that you know more about their situation than they do. Like, don't ever tell them that you know how they're feeling. If someone were to say that to me, it would probably have a snowball effect where I would feel pathetic. I am pretty sure that no one will even understand where I come from or yeah. what I feel, so how can you say that you know how I feel? And then you and you give me examples from your life and it's like, no, and that's not my life. That's not what I felt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The most important thing for me was to have somebody to talk with because you feel so isolated and weird and like the only one in the universe that feels that way. And why do I and why can't I and why? why? Um, a few people have said a few rude things about how to deal with depression and the thing about depression is you don't always understand what you're going through <laughs> depression can be extremely confusing if an autistic person who doesn't necessarily understand emotion if they come to you saying that they're not okay or feel sick because sometimes depression shows itself as like feeling like you're nauseous then try to help them understand what they're going through like maybe looking up the symptoms or something and helping them and helping explain the emotions um, and how they work and stuff. Maybe that will help them come to understand how to take care of themselves and stuff. Another tip to fight depression is to actually learn more about depression. And Milan, you have studied autism and depression and all sorts of diagnoses. Do you think it helps you? I, before I even realized that I was suffering from depression, I was looking up depression just because my friends were suffering with it to understand how they worked. Both allowed me to react appropriately whenever they tell me things. Goodbye and stay safe. Next time we're going to talk about autism and self-harm. Every second Monday, we're going to have a new episode. Instead of every... Sunday. Yeah, every yeah. Sunday. So Mondays at 9am instead.